In the video today, I'd like to show you how you can make your very own hydrogen gas, and it only takes a few cents. Literally. So then I have a couple of experiments that you don't want to miss. So I express ordered some hydrochloric acid over the internet, which to my surprise is something that you can do. This is a 1 liter bottle of 37% hydrochloric acid. For all of the chemists out there, that is 12 molar. Of course I'll have a link in the description in case you want to get your own. Believe it or not, there's actually a lot of disagreement about what makes an acid an acid. The explanation that I prefer is how willing is it to give up its hydrogen. For hydrochloric acid, it is very, very willing. Here are some molecules of HCl. When something else is introduced, like say, the metal zinc, the chlorine will jump ship to bond with the zinc and make zinc chloride. This leaves an H plus ion free in the solution, which will go off in the form of hydrogen gas. Now of course with a lot of zinc, there's going to be a lot more free hydrogens floating around, and every time that there are two hydrogen atoms that come into contact with each other, they'll form the H two molecule. Zinc is pretty easy to come by. You can take any old US penny. Although the outside is coated in copper, the inside is entirely zinc. A shrewd haggler like myself was able to get 100 pennies for only a dollar. Zinc is a pretty soft metal, so you should have no problem cutting through it with the appropriate tool. I tried numerous ways to expose the zinc inside of a penny. Cutting them in half works fine, but the reaction takes a while. If you'd like the reaction to go faster, you can wire brush the copper coating away. Ow. Just be sure that your pennies are post-1982. Before then, they will be comprised entirely of copper, no zinc. Hydrochloric acid is corrosive to pretty much every single part of your body, so it is mandatory that you wear some sort of protection be sure to wear chemistry goggles with splash shields on the side. And to protect your hands, use some nitrile gloves, which the hydrochloric acid will not burn through. Should you happen to spill hydrochloric acid, first neutralize it with baking soda, then dilute it with lots of water before wiping it up. Now this time when I make some hydrogen gas inside this Erlenmeyer flask, I'm going to put a balloon on top and allow the pressure of the created hydrogen to blow it up. We're just going to put our zinc pennies inside the balloon, trying not to puncture it. There's one. Here's another. Yeah, here we go. So now we have our balloon filled with some more zinc. Let's go fill it up. Let's get all of the hydrochloric acid off of the rim of the Erlenmeyer flask, just in case. Okay, so we're going to want to stretch out the balloon like this, and carefully, we don't want to knock over the flask, we're going to want to put the balloon over it, oh perfect, like that. And then with all the zinc in here, we just lift it up. Oh, that's weird. <laughs> There the rest of it goes. Alright, this balloon has, uh, has decided to inflate in a weird way. So we can see the zinc from the pennies violently reacting with the hydrochloric acid. If it would come into focus, there it is. <laughs> so that is the uh, zinc dissolving from inside the pennies, and the bubbles that we see are the hydrogen gas being created and those are inflating this balloon. The hydrochloric acid itself is a vol- oh, wow, <laughs> it's really hot. Yeah, I should mention that this is an exothermic reaction, so it does get pretty hot. Anyway, uh, what was I saying? Oh, right, yes, hydrochloric um, is volatile in and of itself, so it's also always giving off um, hydrogen chloride, HCl gas, and that is also seeping- Ow! That's why we take safety precautions. You always have to be prepared for the worst case scenario. All right, here we go. Take two. Oh, 
All right, that looks like all the hydrogen I'm gonna get. Uh, now, I don't know for the life of me how to tie a balloon, but uh, I can pull a zip tie with the best of them. While we were waiting for that to finish, I came up with a new invention. It's a lighter on a stick. That way I don't need to stand too close to the balloon when I ignite it. Hydrogen is flammable. When it comes into contact with the oxygen in the air, it pulls it apart to create water, and that gives off light and heat in the reaction. Aha, there we go. I can't believe I've forgotten to mention it up until this point, but uh, hydrogen, as you may have guessed, is lighter than air, a lot like helium. So if I let it go, it ascends. So the solution that we're left with inside the flask is some of the excess hydrochloric acid and also some zinc chloride. All of the hydrogen evacuated the solution and was filling the balloon. So what we're left with in here is called halogenated waste and we really, really do not want to dump this down the drain. It'll find its way into the rivers and it'll be not very nice to the ecosystem. Plus, the last thing that we want is to inadvertently turn all of the frogs gay. I'm putting chemicals in the water that turn the friggin' frogs gay! Now with the small amounts that are left in this Erlenmeyer flask, it won't be a problem at all to just dilute the solution and then rinse it out into the sink. 